Britain is heaving with hoarders. I haven't been in this wardrobe for probably about four years. I'm utterly frustrated. I could never find anything. Whose collections are out of control. Never been worn. Never been worn. Their clutter is crashing in all around them. But help is at hand. A bungalow with enough stuff in it for a mansion. Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what is worth cashing in. 45 quid? Yeah, 45 quid. So I'll shake hands with you shake on 35 quid. Shake hands on 35. Quid. While Queens of Clean, Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. Well, they've got a bit of giving them. Yeah, but not enough. What we need to do is divide them up into themes. Rooms will be seen like never before. Brilliant. No one said it would be easy. You're not getting anywhere fast, no, are you? No, it's a bit of a nightmare. So can our hoarders face the old heave-ho? Why isn't he on your mantelpiece? This is the thing. And reclaim their homes for good. Just need to be put in here and organised. I know, I know. Today, they're in Blackpool to help a couple whose home is so cluttered it's turned into a house of horrors. It can be quite hazardous. Which leaves our experts wondering if this place can ever be sorted. Could we not bite the bullet here and actually just put them out to the rubbish? And we'll be in Cumbria with a woman who's sharing her three-bedroomed house with the contents of a hotel. Mirrors, chairs, quilts, cuddly toy. From mattresses to mermaids, she's struggling to part with her possessions. Right, talk, talk to me. What's going on? She's gorgeous. Mm, she's lovely. Later, our experts head to Cumbria to help former hotelier Beverly clear out her cluttered chaos. Wow! That's a lot of stuff, yeah. But first, we're in the razzle-dazzle of Blackpool. Meet theatrical costumier David and his actor partner Jason, Cat Charlie and George the Parrot. They own a shop selling costumes and hire out movie props, but now their work has invaded their home. You keep seeing stuff and you keep thinking, yo, go on then, one more thing. Don't know why I keep it. You seem to have this problem where you have to have 50 jackets Probably not worn it for 10, 15 years. There's nowhere to sit and eat in the dining room. I eat my dinner stood up in the kitchen. And nowhere for guests to sleep in the spare room. The last time somebody stayed over here has got to be about five years ago. That's the bed. David and Jason have decided enough is enough and have called in our experts to help them sort out their hoard. Curtis specialises in antiques. His aim is to find valuable items to sell. Well, at least we got the sun out today. Yeah. I didn't realise you had the sun in Blackpool. And Marianne is a professional housekeeper who knows just what's needed to tidy a place up. Morning. Hi, Hi. good morning. Please, come through. Thanks very much. Wow. The flat is behind the shop, although it's hard to tell where one ends and the other starts. But eventually they get to... The living room. This is an Aladdin's cave of so many things. I can't wait to get and have a look round. It's full of stuff, but it doesn't feel like it shouldn't be here. I love it. It's mm. really lovely. And it reflects you two, I can see. And I imagine you're entertainers. Yeah, but we tend to entertain away from the house, not... Because... Yeah. Because there's no room, really, no is room. there, to sit. Yeah. Where do you eat? Do On our lap. Yeah. On your uh, lap, right. That's not good. Pink lady, that's definitely me. Now, now, there's work to do, Curtis and Marianne. Oh, check out that. That's definitely me. If you're both quite finished, it's time to get down to business. No, nothing for me in there. Movie props. Everything looks real, but isn't. Got to be something in here. Grecian urn. What is a Grecian urn? About 100 quid a week, I think. For me, it's about hunting out the genuine, about the real. And in a house like this, you don't know where to start. But there's things to sell, that's for sure. Frank Sinatra, and Benny Hill. Well, there's no business like show business. Curtis discovers something that, although is not quite the X factor, it may have the vintage factor. 
an old radio. See, I think it conjures up the 60s, doesn't it, in a fabulous way. Because now everyone buys, don't they, the, the reproduction retro version of this. Yeah. Which makes this, all of a sudden, quite a retro, desirable item. Marianne's with Jason in the spare room, which seems to be more of a walk-in wardrobe than somewhere to sleep. What are your hopes for this room? We uh, have nowhere to put people up at the moment, and when people come through, we have to book them into a hotel, and it's not the same. To have a guest room, hopefully a double, would be ideal. Only a vampire could find this room comfortable, sleeping on the ceiling. I mean, what do we have here? Full-size sunbed with the intention of setting up and using. Uh, right, and that clearly hasn't happened. Comes down to space. <laughs> Which you have very little of. Incredibly, there is actually a bed in here already. I yes. see a fold-up bed. But we can't open that bed, can we? Because look at all this on the floor. Do you have any idea what's here? I do know that a couple of these bags instantly can go straight into the bin because they're old T-shirts. That's the attitude, Jason. Good start. A bedroom is meant to be beautiful. I want to help these guys style it for sleep, not as a storage unit. In the living room, the boys are showing Curtis some of their very own Blackpool illuminations. So where did you find these? We actually found them in a room in our warehouse. And where do you think they came from? By the look of them, I, I can kind of imagine them above a pool table, maybe, or... I, I'm just yeah. not sure. I mean, they've got a lot of weight to them. They're in good condition. So we've got three sets of these. Yes. Two of those. Yes. So I think £500 mm -hmm. would be a reasonable price. And that would be total profit for the boys, as they didn't pay a penny for the lights. Nor did they for another collection Jason has laid out for Curtis in the kitchen. Tell me about all these coins. One of them wonderful things, the old skip, was put out on the back forecourt. And uh, one night I could see the arm of a bass guitar sticking up. And uh, when I went to pull the bass guitar out of the skip, I could hear this tinkling of all this money dropping through all the, uh, the rubbish in the skip. This is what I managed to rescue. With permission, of course. I'm so glad you haven't cleaned these. If you lose the patination, that, that lovely feeling of age, all of a sudden you're going to knock the value flat. Already, just in that box, you've got about 70, 80 pounds. Yes. In that box alone. Ka-ching! And there's more. Oh, a Festival of Britain coin. It is in immaculate condition, isn't it? Isn't it just? Look at that. I wonder how much this was. This is getting interesting. Let's get excited. I, it could be between 50 and 100 pounds. That is fantastic. That's not bad for a couple of nights in a skip. While Curtis is confident of getting some decent cash for the radio and the coin collection, he'll have to be on top form to hit the reserve of £250 the boys have put on the lights. I shouldn't say this, but I wouldn't change anything about their home. But there's so much clutter everywhere. I know. And that's know. what we need to get rid of to make it so that they can enjoy the space. The house suits their personalities. I wouldn't want to walk in that house and it looks like a New York loft. It still needs to have that character of them, but just a little bit less than what they've got now. Do you think you can draw that balance with them, though? I think so. So while Marianne stays behind to help the lads decide what to keep and clear out, Curtis is at an antique centre aiming to get a good price for the radio. Morning, Polly. Morning. I've bought something I wanted to show you. Oh, yeah, that looks amazing. I'm liking the look of that. Now, it doesn't work, so it's oh, going to be yeah. decorative. It's not been yeah. hardwired. Because of that, I feel I'd only really want to give about no more than 30 for it. You couldn't squeeze a little bit more out of your offer, could you? Wouldn't go any more than 35. Yeah, go on, then, 35 pounds. Marvellous. I'm really pleased Polly bought that radio. She offered me 30, we got 35. She's got to do work on it, but I'm really pleased with that. Good. <laughs> well, that was nice and easy, wasn't it? David and Jason aren't the only ones looking for help from our experts. Meet Beverly. 
She originally hails from Essex, but now lives in this three-bedroomed house in Cumbria, along with the contents of a 17-bedroom hotel she used to run. It's all the stuff that I've got from the hotel. I now have it here. When Beverly's business failed, she salvaged everything she could. Now her house looks like a warehouse. There's mirrors, chairs, cups and saucers. And the garden is full of clutter, more clutter, and a, a mermaid. I've got so much clutter in it that I can't move, and I just need to get rid of it for a bit of sanity. Cumbria, one of my favourite places. Really? Never been here before. Curtis is hoping to uncover some quality items to sell. And he's been joined by declutter expert Joanna, who runs her own cleaning company. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Hi. Come in. Thanks Thank very you, much. Beverly. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff, yeah. An awful lot of stuff. Mm. And this is just part of it. Really? There's some out there. Oh, Beverly. Before they can help, though, time for a bit of an expert rummage so they can see just what they're dealing with. Squeeze through. Seems that all the stuff is overfilling to every room. Some cute little bedside lamps. I loved doing the place up. I'm sure she'd find a bar for that. I used to love a bit of sparkle. Beverly certainly loves a bit of bling, but is any of this stuff worth anything? Maybe 20. It's time to move on and um, sell it. And as long as I can get, like, maybe the right price, I'll be happy. There are two particular pieces that she has, which she hopes can make some good cash. We've got this lovely table, this lovely... What, what is this? What uh, am I looking that's at? That's a set of chest of drawers. Now, I can't get into them, so um, if I ripped all this packaging off now, I'm not going to find a scratch, a dent, a donk, a mark. No. Nothing. No, we really looked after them. But they're going? Yeah. I think I can probably get you 200, if not more, for this pedestal table. This... I think 200 is maybe as far as we go. Oh, yeah. You want to keep it all? No, it's going. Go on. <laughs> so all the glass stuff is going? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Emotionally attached to any of this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> because it's the hotel, because you love it, because you paid a lot uh, for it? What... No, when I'd done the bedrooms, I loved it so much. Right. I'd done them all individual. Right. I put so much time into it. I didn't just get stuff. I've I, I just done it and... Is this like having a litter of puppies and selling the puppies? Probably. Still to come, Curtis has his work cut out as he tries to persuade Bev to let go of her beloved mermaid. You can't part with it. It's not enough money. She's gorgeous. Mm, she's lovely. And Marianne gets tough with David. Do we need this? So that's a start, isn't it? In Blackpool, cleaning guru Marianne is with David and Jason decluttering their flat so they can have guests to stay. When people come through, we have to book them into a hotel. Whilst in Cumbria, cleaning professional Joanna is helping ex-hotel manager Beverly reclaim that much-needed space. It's wrapped, protected, so it'll be so easy for Beverly to get it out and get it sold. And antiques aficionado Curtis is helping Beverly hunt for items to sell to make some cash. These are great. Yeah. Aren't they? Yeah. Really, really good. And these were in the bedrooms of the hotel? Yeah. OK. How many of these are there? There's these two here. Are they the, the black, sign. red and white? These, there's these ones. Yeah. Um, and there's a black and cream one. There should be another one somewhere. So that's four. Yeah. That one's just a bit come away here. Yeah. Do you know what's great about these? Is they have that lovely never-to-go-out-of-fashion style. Mm. What would you be happy getting back for these? 45 quid. <laughs> Do you know what? I think you're going to be fine with that. These have got a lot more saleability. Curtis is on a roll finding items to sell. Meanwhile, Joanna faces a different challenge. 
As Bev is happy for most of her furniture to go, Joanna's job today is focused more on giving advice than filling bags. I wouldn't fancy eating my dinner in here, Bev. <laughs> no. There's lamps there, some vases there. Yeah, there's things that Pillars. are all in pre-packed. I'd normally like to give you a tip on how to clear this, but I think the, the best tip would be to decide what you want to keep. Is there anything that you can see through here what you actually want to keep? So no, just... obviously, I want to get rid of everything. I just hope that when we do come to declutter, you can actually let go of all yeah, this. Yeah, I will. Like, you know, there's only, there may be a few bits that I might go, oh, but, like, in the end, I probably will let them go. So where's this stuff from? It's all from my business. And what happened? I lost it. Beverly started running her business eight years ago and threw her all into it, transforming it from a rundown guest house into a chic boutique hotel. Done every bedroom different, like funky, couple traditional. I was always thinking what I could do with it to make it that little bit extra special, having the lighting beautiful. But disaster struck when Cockermouth was hit by a series of floods, and then a few years later, roadworks closed the main route into town for a year. I was trying to cope, I don't know, it's like mad. And keep the business running, to do that on my own was a bit daunting. And try and keep a place looking nice, so people still wanted to come there. It was really hard work. But the business just couldn't survive. I just fell into a little bit of difficulty. I just needed a bit of help. And um, in the end, Beverly had no choice but to leave the hotel. She salvaged what she could and moved into her parents' old home. Thousands of businesses out there yeah. that fail every day, but what you've got to do is dust yourself off and get back on with it. Yeah. My heart really goes out to Beverly. I own my own business, and I know that she was really passionate about her business. Because there's an emotional attachment to the items that Beverly has in her house, I really think she'll struggle to let them go. And there's one item above all others where Beverly will struggle, her mermaid water feature. This is the piece to show you, the mermaid. Limey. She gorgeous. She, do you know what? She is. I quite like that. I've had her for years, really. She's followed us about everywhere. And you're happy to get rid of her? Well, I don't know. At the right <laughs> Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'd like to get rid of her, but... Yeah. And you paid... 800. I mean, she's cast and she's hollow, but she still weighs a ton, I assume. Yeah. This isn't easy to put a price on. Have you got a price in mind that you absolutely have to get for her, for her to leave you? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Five. Hundred. I think we could get £250 for her. That's my best guess. I mean, I know that's not what you want to hear, <laughs> and I know you want more for it, and of course, I'm going to try and get as much as I possibly can. Ah. Uh, you can't part with it? It's I, not enough money? What is well, it? Well, I mean, she's gorgeous. Mm, she's lovely. And... And I think... <laughs> I think for, like, two, two three hundred quid, well, I might as well keep her. So if I can get someone to part with £500 for this, I can come and take it and sell it on your behalf. Yeah. If I can't get £500... Then I'll keep her. Ooh, you <laughs> set me a challenge there, my love. That is a stiff challenge, Curtis. With the table and the chest of drawers, he's aiming to bring Beverly back nearly a £1,000 for her high-value items. Good luck, Curtis. I think you're going to need it. This is a really difficult one. You've got to get her to get stuff out, and I've got to at least make her realise that the price she paid is not the price she's going to get back. Yes. How about you? It's been great. I love all of the furniture that Beverly's got. In oh, fact, do I you? want to buy a few pieces myself. Do you? Oh, maybe my job's really simple because I can just sell it to you. Very unlikely. Hmm. Anyway, I better go off and sell. Good luck. No, you good luck. I know. 
Joanna stays behind to help Beverly sort out her clutter. Curtis calls into a cold and misty antiques fair with her glass table. This is Bev's table from the hotel. Now, the trouble is, bringing it to a fair like this, it's a big thing. So whoever buys it, he's going to need a car to take it home. She wants £200. I don't think that's a bad price. I'd like to get as close to that as I possibly can. And like a magpie to a shiny milk bottle lid, a buyer soon swoops in for a closer look. Although this particular shopper wasn't keen to appear on camera, but Curtis is happy with the sale. Bev's glass table, gone. She wanted 200, got 190. But at a fair like this, everyone wants a bit off. I think she's going to be happy with that. Lady's just gone to get a car. Great start, Curtis. That's £190 towards Beverly's cash for clutter total. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Enjoy then. it. Thanks, then. Bye. Meanwhile, back in Blackpool, Marianne is rummaging through the random piles of clothing stacked around the house. More jumpers. You seem to have this problem where you have to have 50 jackets. Mine, mine, mine. 200 T-shirts. Mine, mine. 100 pairs of jeans. Mine, mine. Jason's. 60 Hawes and Curtis shirts. Mine, 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 mine. I haven't got 60 Hawes and Curtis shirts. I've got 64. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and it doesn't stop there. Underpants. How do you find your underpants? T-shirts, T-shirts. Why would you keep your socks in a bag like this? Jason. Yeah. You have so many pairs of shoes and trainers, boots. You can't possibly wear them all. Um, no, I can't, but David does. He has a habit, like with his shirts, he seems to buy trainers and shoes every other week. Right. Clearly, he isn't going to wear these again, is he? Probably not. But these could really be thrown out, couldn't they? I would say yes. They've had their time. David and Jason have a stack of work to do, deciding which clothes to keep and which to clear. And through in the living room, Marianne's helping David box up all those movie props that are cluttering up that unused dining table. Each Christmas, we clear everything off the table so that we can get to the table just for Christmas Day. With empty boxes waiting to be filled, it's time to be ruthless and get rid. Printers and, and all the magazines, all that could go to my office at my studio. OK, brilliant. We have shells here and Christmas balls. Could we not bite the bullet here and actually just rubbish? Well, personally, I would say it could go to a, sh a charity shop because it's set in a piece of objet d'art. Oh, gosh, how posh. Pop that into there. Out and the then way. that object does Objet d'art. Can go in there. But at least then we're getting rid of it. Yeah. So that's a start, isn't it? Do we need this? Could make a nice hat. So, David, there's just a whole area now cleared. Perhaps we can lay the table, and then, therefore, you'll be able to have dinner later. Just needs a polish now. I love the smell of polish. Ooh, gleaming. Our cleaning fairy godmother is about to leave our Blackpool boys to it. David and Jason are getting the hang of decluttering, but they need to keep up the momentum, as there's a mound more still to do before they can have guests over to stay. Still to come, Beverly begins the big clear out. Feeling a little bit anxious because some of my beautiful stuff's going. And Curtis takes David and Jason's coins to auction. We go straight in at 100. In Cumbria, Beverly is coming to terms with letting go of her mountain of furniture from her former business. This isn't cheap stuff, this is all tip top stuff. While back in Blackpool, Marianne has left David and Jason to crack on with the clear-out, and Curtis has pinpointed some top items he hopes will land the lads some cash. He's brought the boys' lights to an antiques fair, hoping that someone will be dazzled enough to part with their cash. David and Jason want £250 for this, but they didn't pay anything for them. So I'm hoping someone makes me an offer they will be happy with. 
With the boy's reserve of £250, Curtis will need to work hard to persuade any potential buyers. What do you think of them? Well, for what they are, they're quite attractive, yeah. They're good pieces, yeah. Um, they are what they are. Well, I'll ask you, what do you think you'd pay for them? £30 each for these and £15 each for the singles. So you're looking at 135, 140, something like that? Yeah, yeah. something like that, yeah. 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 Danger is... Yeah, go on. These blokes want 250 minimum. Right, OK. Yeah, I don't think we could match that. Yeah, so. I'd like that as well. We're not going to do a deal. Okay. It doesn't look like it, no. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no, they're good things, but not so for us today, nice, no. So very nice, but like you say, the right market. Well, thanks for your time, anyway. Thanks ever so much. Thank you very much. So David and Jason's high reserve means there's no sale for Curtis. Time to pile the lights back into the van and take them back to Blackpool. Where it's D-Day. That's D for dynamic duo. David and Jason are on a mission to clear out their house, which is crammed full with clothes and movie props, so that they can invite those long overdue guests for the first time in five years. So are you ready for this today? Dead in it. We've had time to think about what we want to keep and what we want to get rid of. Let's also make a pact that we're not going to fill the house full of any more rubbish. Oh, it's you, not me. I think it's maybe about, say, 70, 30. Boys, 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 enough. And while we're at it, all this sitting about is not getting your house cleared. Time to get a move on. Look what I've got. No, you don't look good. Yep. Well, that's it now. Oh, well, I've got a pair of these. Scissors, sellotape. And I've got another pair for you. Right, well, that's it now. So are we ready to crack on? So, yeah, come on. Yeah. Teamwork and cooperation is the only way to get through this. Having identified what is for keeping and what is for selling, they start the packaging. So that's a wrap for those movie props. Don't drop it. I'm not going to. Not that it matters if you break it. It's not like it's a piece of objet d'art. David. Sorry. There were, there were nice pieces that I bought years ago. Yeah? The peace and harmony didn't last long. So you feeling excited yet? No. No, why not? This is a new start, David. It's daunting. Well, it's, I wouldn't say it's daunting. <laughs> Don't sing. I won't. I'll try not to. You know what? You know when my ears start to bleed. I know. Less of the singing, more of the decision making. Not been used. Time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. Charity yeah. shop. Well, the living room is taking shape. Time now to deal with that would-be guest room. All of this clothing here that we've sorted for charity, yeah. can we get that in bags and out the way, yeah? yeah? OK. Right. If I give you right. one, charity you start bags whacking yellow, it in. Now, what I don't want you to do is start picking out stuff saying, oh, I want to keep this, I want to keep this. Oh, I want to keep that. No, David, it's got to go. Jason has certainly got the declutter bug. You won't wear it. All in the bag. Oh, well, if I lose weight. And he possesses a much more ruthless streak than David. Once we can clear this bit here, we can get this bed folded back up out the way and then we can concentrate on removing this blooming sunbed. Yes. Yeah. And I tell you what, once that beast is out the way, you'll be surprised how clear this room is. Yeah, the room will be more or less back to the way it was before you decided to buy a sunbed. That's you told, Jason. That's what we sorted with Marianne. OK. We, she sorted through them all, so yep. that's all going. That's charity shop. That's right. all T-shirts. OK, doubt. Well, I won't even bother looking in the bags. Don't need to. That's more like it. Momentum at last. Right, I'll take the box. I've got the bag. Okie dokie. With the room beginning to look more like a bedroom than a walk-in wardrobe, it's time to tackle Jason's sunbed. He called it a beast, and it's certainly big and bulky. Right, no, no. I'm not going to shift that. No, that's, that's gone in at the bottom. Yeah. That's it. Right, I suggest we leave it. Get a okay. couple of lads down to help us shift it. Yeah. We're not going to do that. We've made an impact, haven't we? Look at the room. I oh, know. It's clear. Come on. I've had enough now, anyway. Okie dokie. Right. We're going to have a cup of tea. I think they deserve their cuppa, but it's only a pit stop. That van still needs to be filled. Curtis has taken David and Jason's coin collection to an auction, 
where he is hoping to realise their true worth. Everybody's got a coin collection, but they've got a Festival of Britain 1951 coin in mint condition and boxed. So I'm hoping that's what makes this lot unique. Some unscrupulous sellers may try to artificially age coins to increase their value, but Curtis is confident that these are authentic. There we go, straight on out to the collection of coins, which is a large quantity of silver. We go straight in at 110 pounds, at 110 now. At 110, I'm looking for 115 now, at 110 pounds. And this is not expensive at 110, but I'm selling it at 110. One bid at 110 pounds of you all finished. 110 it is. What good news about David and Jason's coins. They didn't pay anything for them, which means that's pure profit. They are gonna be delighted. Meanwhile, in Cumbria, our cleaning expert Joanna is casting an eye over the rest of Beverly's hotel hoard. What's your vision for this room? Maybe get me a little gym and a little chair in there. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. The good thing is, the majority of the stuff is beautifully wrapped. It's been well taken care of. You'll get some good money for this. Did you want to spend the money on anything particular? Yeah, long holiday. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's definitely our challenge, to raise you as much money as possible so you can go on a holiday. Yeah. Bev has lots of items of furniture from her hotel business she wants to sell. Most furniture depreciates in value after it has had some use. The quality and condition of a piece is key and will help determine the price you can command. Well-made items from quality materials are more likely to bring in a profit. Back in Blackpool, David and Jason are making real progress and are bagging up piles of clothes. It's going to give us our guest bedroom. Yeah. And looking at the space that we'll have afterwards, I think we can get away with the double in here. And Jason has even managed to find a potential buyer for one of his objets d'art. I've got a couple of pieces in the van. Mm -hmm. There's the lamp especially, which I know that you like. The Art Deco figurine lamp. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's up for grabs. Right, OK. It's here. Yeah. So, to be rude, I'm looking for about 50 quid. Depending on what I've got in my pocket, is depending on... Interesting what... haggling tactic. Let's hope he's not got a pocket full of change. 40. 40 pounds. 40 pounds. That's what I've got on me. Go on. Yeah? Go on. Jason, thank you very much for a start. Mark, thank you very much. She belongs to me. Enjoy. So, an unexpected £40 goes into the coffers. After a day of decluttering, David and Jason have taken away eight boxes, several bags of clothes and six larger items into a van destined for storage, charity and online selling. A few weeks later, and the boys are sitting at their cleared dining room table, awaiting Marianne's visit. I think we've worked damned hard. We certainly have. I certainly put in a few, fair few hours. Well. I mean, clearing all the stuff. Cheers. Lovely to sit at the table and have a coffee. You know, it's been many years since we've sat here and done that. I just hope that Marianne is impressed. Oh, talk of the devil. Are you coming? I'm coming. It's safe to say, with all the work the boys have put in, Marianne will not believe her eyes. Well, as you can see, we've been working really hard. I can just... You have literally just blown me away, cos I did not for one minute think that you two guys would have cleared this room. Only a few weeks ago, their living room was packed with movie props from their business, as well as all their collected trinkets and ornaments. But the transformation is complete, and what a job they've done. Do you feel pleased with the, what you've done? I think one of the main things is the, the relief. Mm. You actually feel this kind of... I, I, it's difficult to try and describe, but it's like when you've been shopping and you're carrying a load of heavy bags, and then you suddenly you let them go. And that's a release. It's a really homely feel. I'm really pleased you guys have done it. When I was here last time, there wasn't even a space on the wall. There was barely room for the cat to sit down, let alone me. And it's not just the cat who will be pleased. George the parrot has reasons to be cheerful too. 
Oh, this is George's new home. Very nice. On an evening, he oh. comes and joins us in the lounge and he watches a bit of TV. In the bedroom, the boys have been hard at work too. Now you've cleared this whole space, the only thing I see is a sunbed. What are you going to do with it? Well, we are actually having the sunbed removed next week and then this room will be totally clear and ready for decoration. Before, the boys' spare bedroom was stacked floor to ceiling with all manner of clutter. But with their hard work and ruthless will to make this space habitable, it is almost looking like a bedroom worthy of the name. I've got friends down in London that uh, I'd like to invite up. You know, I've been here 17 years, and in the 17 years, they've only been up once and stayed in a hotel. Uh, at least now, well, now I can say to them, you know, you can come up, you can stay with me. And that's fabulous. That is really good. I'm really proud of you guys. All that remains to be done is to find out the boys' cash for clutter total. As well as Curtis's sale items, the boys have also been busy selling their unwanted items online. So, Jason, David, how much did you make from your sales? Uh, in total, with everything that we, we've sold, uh, with online auctions and, and various other aspects, we, we was it about £1,100? Wow! That is brilliant. It is amazing. Add Curtis's sales onto that and their cash for clutter total is a whopping £1,245 before commission and fees. The online sales uh -huh. that there are to come yes. could We have many boost more things. Figure. And hopefully, with the extra sales that are still yet to come through, uh, we've actually decided we're going to extend this wall, we're going to push it out, and we're going to make this an ensuite bedroom. So this whole process, from start to finish, how have you found that? It's actually learning to kind of think, do you know what, the memories are up here. They're not in all the material possessions around exactly. us. Exactly. Time to let go. And you have to let go of some things to make the space. I thought I was going to surprise David and Jason, but they actually surprised me. What with decluttering the room, clearing all that stuff, selling all those items. I mean, hats off to them. Well done, guys. Hey, come on. With the job pretty much done, there's only one way to enjoy the extra space, with a traditional Blackpool meal. You want a chip with Daddy? Oh, I love chip. Now I've actually lived here for a few days without all this clutter. It actually makes me realise we don't need all this stuff around us no. anymore. Achievement's done. Still to come, Curtis takes Bev's mermaid to an antiques fair, looking for a buyer to pay top dollar. I can't go that low. Yeah, it's too much for me. Meanwhile, Bev is still struggling to let go. I mean, I've took a couple of bits and eat them. <laughs> In Cumbria, Beverly's house full of hotel furniture is wrapped up and good to go. But all this stuff is in such good condition. Yeah, I'm sure you'd find a buyer for all of it. While Curtis is at an antiques fair with Bev's prized mermaid, hoping to hook a buyer. Bev's bottom line for this is £500. Now, I don't think it's about the money with this. She's had it a long time, and I just don't think she wants to part with it. If I can get £500, it's going. Today's damp conditions make this perfect mermaid selling weather. Eventually, a potential buyer is charmed into discussing a price with Curtis. So you're interested? On the price. Depends what you want for it. Well, she paid 800 quid for it. So as a, as a bottom line, I've got to get for it. But I think it's worth it. Uh, what's your thoughts? It needs cleaning up. It's had a bit of a life. I mean, I'd like to buy it for 400 quid. Yeah, That's that what is... I'd like to buy it for. Yeah, I'm sure you would. I can't go that low, to be honest. Uh, I'm really... 550, I'd be happy with. Yeah, it's too much for me. Too much. It's a rainy day. You're not going to sell it to anyone else. 500 quid. Take it or leave it. I'm yeah. not that fussed if I buy it. I don't want to be carting at home, so that's for sure. Right, 500 quid. 500 pound, in your hand. Job done. Deal now done. I'm happy. So Bev's Mermaid is sold, £500. I think that's a fair price. I just didn't think she wanted to get rid of it at any price, to be honest. Will she be happy? I think she will. £500. Thank you, my friend. Back in sunny Cumbria, the removal van has arrived. So the remainder of Beverly's furniture needs to be shipped out for auction. Today's the big day for decluttering. Beverly! 
doors open. Feeling a little bit anxious because some of my beautiful stuff's going. Bevel is being ably assisted by removals team Sharon and Brian. When Curtis and Joanna were here last time, it was good advice. And sometimes you just need a little push in the right direction. Beverly's house was chock-a-block with furniture she loved from her former hotel business, and parting with it wasn't easy. I mean, I have took a couple of bits and hid them. <laughs> Despite Beverly's secret stashing of a few favourite pieces, with the help of the removals team, the declutter is well underway. I'm feeling all right now, just getting it out and um, being able to move again, it'll be uh, it's lovely. Soon, it's only the final few remaining boxes that need to be loaded into the van. I was going to slip them away, but I won't. <laughs> Good for you, Bev. Clear it out. Now uh, everything's gone and it's so open and clear. It, it just feels really, like, peaceful and calming now. With the van loaded, it's time for Beverly to bid her furniture a fond farewell. Oh. Soon enough, she'll discover just how much her cash for clutter total will be. Thank you. Cheers, bye. A few weeks later, and Bev is busying herself making a few last-minute adjustments ahead of Curtis's final visit. Curtis is about to arrive now, and I'm so nervous. I hope he loves it. It was such a tip. I was climbing over everything. He will love it. I'm sure he will. I'm back in a very wet and windy Cumbria to see Bev. Now, last time I was here, she didn't want to get rid of anything, so I'm not expecting too much. But you know what? With what I've got to tell her, might brighten her day up. Hi, Hi Curtis. You're going to be amazed. Show You're me gonna then. You're going to love it. Come on then, let's have a look. Only a few weeks ago, Bev's house was filled to bursting with contents of the hotel that she used to run. Her home used to resemble a self storage unit rather than a three bedroom semi. But look at the transformation. This is the front room. It's just all so different. Yeah. That's what I can't get over. It's starting to look really good, isn't it? Yeah. It, yeah, it's getting there. It's, it's feeling a bit more homely and everything. Yeah. Know? It just feels so big. Bev's front room, which was once a dark hole of gloom, is now a living room filled with light. And the conservatory, which before was stacked ceiling high, is now a peaceful haven of calm and space. Am I in the right house? Yeah, you are in the right house. What have you done? Where's all the stuff? This was floor to ceiling when I was here last time. It was up here and everywhere. It's just amazing. I, it, it's become a room again, not a storage facility. I oh, know. This is where I, I sit most of the time, because I love it in here. I, I, I just sit there, me in that chair and the dog in that chair. <laughs> You've got a nice little life cut out here, haven't you now, to be honest? With the help of our experts, Bev has transformed her home from cluttered chaos to a home more than worthy of the name. Best of all, Curtis has news of her cash for clutter total. Have you got any idea how much I've made for you? No. None at all? No. Well, the mermaid went and we sold one of your lovely glass tables. So you genuinely have no idea how much I made? No. Okay. So if it was around the £1,000 mark, you'd be happy? Yeah. Well, it's just shy of £1,300. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Not only does Bev have a beautifully tidy home, she has a truly impressive cash for clutter total. Curtis managed to get a whopping £500 for that mermaid water feature, and the mirrored table raised £190. And a bulk auction sale of the rest helped deliver that total. For Bev, the benefits of the declutter are not only financial. Doing this has given me a push. Um, I, at the time, I didn't want to get rid of it. I was thinking, oh, God, and I see it all outside and thinking, 
But now it's gone, obviously, I, I think it was you who said to me, once it goes, you won't f think about it. The transformation in this house is remarkable. Bev's done a brilliant job since I was last here. She's one of the nicest people I've ever worked with. She's worked hard, we've worked hard, and she's 1,300 pounds better off as well. She deserves every single penny. Once again, our experts have rescued another self-confessed hoarder from their clutter. I'm so chuffed and it's lovely. Good. Thank you. That's a pleasure.